Alrighty, man, that music gets me jazzed every week. I should like yeah the, play that when I work out and stuff. Um, sure. Anyways, I'll play when you wake up first thing in the morning. <laughs> Welcome to another Tuesday stream um, with John and Jay. Um, I'm Jay from Take That Review, T A K E. Um, John and I have some fun stuff to drink tonight. Uh, we're a little light on news, so it'll be a little heavy on fun, which is always kind of nice. I believe John's on vacation next week, so it should be a nice send off for that. I am. I'm on vacation for the next two weeks, but I'm going to probably work for one of them. So, like, I don't know how much that counts. Work for like 11 of those 14 days. Yep. Yeah. Work. How you been? Very good. Pretty busy, but very good overall here. Good. Uh, good. See, I've got the the Jack Porto and the Knob Creek Porto. Cool. I'm All a little right. behind. We. Uh... Yeah, I still got to pour this one here, but I guess I right. Ready to rip on these. Um, let's see. To anybody who's joining in here, let's go ahead and throw into the chat here. Let us know what you're drinking. Let us know about how your week is going so far. We're going to be sipping on a little... Uh, oh, did I put the cork back in? I did not. We're going to be sipping on a little uh, Jack Daniels Bell Proof Single Barrel Pick by Bourbon Pursuit. This one is uh, named the Goose's Lightning. It is a five-year, hundred and what is it, hundred thirty-two point three proof. I think. Yeah, that feels about right. It is. If I can get it, if I can do this without breaking anything, it is not <laughs> not bourbon. <laughs> I've actually not seen that. I, I have reviewed it, but I have not seen the sticker yet, which is pretty funny. I really like the uh, hang tag that they do on these as well, like little brass. Oh buttons. yeah, they they've slowly stopped doing that. I've noticed from the local ones, um, but I always thought those were kind of a cool touch. I I I had never seen anything like that on any other picks. They really stood out. Yeah, it's really fancy looking. Two dudes production sipping a little fifteen year KC. That's exactly man. what I like to hear, man. Thirteen I, to fifteen year KC is like the bomb yep i just got suckered into i think it was a 14 5 this weekend i couldn't resist it i can't say no to a man there was a a let's see i think it was a 15 year local pick it's the first one that i've ever seen in maine i think it's the first one we've ever got okay and it's like a 15 year or near enough that it makes no matter knob creek pick for 50 bucks and it's like yeah i, I do want one Please set one aside. Like, I'll be there shortly. Forty six bucks. It's just silly. Yeah, you can't say no to that. Oop, hold up. I'm gonna flip my cam for just one second. There's a bug crawling on the wall, and I want to smack it. All right, cam flip here. Sorry about that. Eric Schmalz having a little bit of Mictus Ten. I just uh, just posted my review on Mictus Ten. Oh wait, somebody scheduled it. I just rolled that up recently. Anyway, I can't remember if I posted it yet or not. Let's see who else are we get here. Yep, Mictus 10. Let's see, Matthew's hitting in a little... Uh, uh, we talked about drinking this tonight, Matthew Haas, with the uh, 1920. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. Old phone 1920. We talked about getting into that. We uh, decided to push that. We're going to do something cool with that a little bit a little bit down the road. It might be after vacation time here for me, anyhow. Oh, shoot. Am I frozen? Uh, Yeah, you look like not super fluid. Oh. And we're going to try again. Dude, you're frozen as hell. <laughs> All right. No problem. Give me just one second. At least it didn't catch you with one eye closed. I know. I, I can't think of a worse look, but it, it could definitely be worse than that. Hokey. Yeah. I grabbed uh, a, I think the New Hampshire one I picked up was a 12 year, but yeah, I'm barely over 40 bucks. Can't go wrong. Absolutely great. Live free or die. Do there not overpay for anything. There we go. We have Jay again. That is the one thing I do miss about the East Coast is driving up into Hampshire and picking up some good stuff. Yeah. The scoring things crazy cheap. Let's see. All right. I'll pour the final of this. Yeah, I had this Goose's once before. Pretty big fan. Yeah, you you rated this Goose, what, an 8? Yeah, 8 out of 10, I think. So we'll see. Very, if very nicely scored. Yeah, it's one of the better... Jack Daniels I've had in a while. Oh, 1920. Nice choice, Matthew. Yes. 
actually just got one of those this week too and i forgot how much i like it like i never have remembered that i didn't like it but every time i have it, it it's so much better than i recalled i feel like that with almost the entire whiskey row series where actually even the uh the one that's kind of lateral to it the statesman every oh, time wow. i grab one of those i'm like man i forgot how much i really kind of dig this overall it's just a like they're all just really tasty the 1910 I did not like, but I did not either. Happily... Too sweet for me. I still have Sweeter. probably three quarters of a bottle. I use it though to make what I call my holiday schmooze. Did I share this recipe with you yet? Uh, no, but I gotta hear it. Okay, I don't remember the exact stuff. I've got it uh, pinned in Discord, so okay. uh, I'll have to jump back over and grab that when it comes back around the holiday season. I'll share it again. But it's effectively um, a spicy rye a touch of Grand Marnier, an American brandy, like a, like an E&J or something like that, and the 1910. And oh. I, there was a lot of science involved, a lot of uh, tasting science involved in making the blend. Sure, sure. And so I've got the rest of it actually now in my uh, holiday schmooze decanter. But <laughs> it was developed specifically for my gingerbread eggnog. So I made a homemade eggnog and used this to and then booze it up. Oh, Oh, and it was uh, really nice. Like, you know, the mix of the American brandy with the big fat vanilla sweetness that comes through that balanced with the spicy rye. I think I used a uh, wild turkey 101 rye as I okay. usually want to do. And then uh, just that little touch of citrus from the Grand Marnier and then the big sweet marshmallow chocolatey 1910 kind of brought it all together for like that desserty punch. Man, that actually sounds pretty good. It was actually pretty good. And like, I don't give a damn about eggnog, but I intentionally made mine less sweet than you would get. Like it, nothing from the store would be like this. It was a gingerbread, you know, it was a little bit spice forward yeah. and just kind of like really rich. And then you throw that boozy note in the background and it was good. Man, I like every time I think about holiday eggnog, I think of Christmas vacation. Yep. And Uncle Eddie in, with like in the moose, moose mug. <laughs> That for I me, will always be like peak eggnog. I watch that movie so many fucking times every year. It's borderline embarrassing. <laughs> Playball. Anyways, on that note. Oh, right. Bourbon. <laughs> but no, I agree. 1910, it's just too sweet for me. I, I'll i probably revisit it. I'll probably buy the rest of the line in the next couple of weeks. And I, I can't tell you the last time I had Statesman. I might have to try that too. Man, it's that's one that I held off on for so long because I was like, this stuff has got to be the same you know, as all for else. yeah, all for co and no knickers here. This thing is just like totally gimmicky, hyped up. It's from a movie. It's got to be like a watered down version of Old Foe One Hundred or something. Yeah, and I got it, tried it out. I was like, hey, you know what? It's actually kind of good. And then it opened up a little bit, and like I got pretty pumped about it, actually. Oh, okay. I, I tried some at the end of a tasting, so I was shot. But I was really interested in the Statesman Glendronach um, release, which I never saw, and it was a million billion dollars because they opened a scotch distillery. You know, in the film, they sourced from Glendronach um, for the release and I was super psyched about that one. And then I, I saw nothing but old Forrester Statesman and none of the Glendronic, which yeah. made me kind of sad. Ooh, uh, an Etsy page. Do you have an Etsy page? Um, I, yeah, I don't know what you'd produce on an Etsy page. I, I think where he was going with that was uh, the holiday eggnog solution. Oh, uh, what are you getting into first there? So I, I picked up, I poured the Daniels and the Knob Creek. I started stiff the Knob Creek a little bit. All right. Let's go there. Uh, Let's get involved with that. So the fun Justin, part of this, we have a fairly, hey, Justin, good evening to you. Um, we have a fairly high profile selection from Jack Daniels. Um, this is a Knob Creek uh, nine year single barrel. Um, this is off the shelf from a random store in Wisconsin. I bought it at a store called Steve's on Junction. Um, I actually bought it like an hour before Whiskey From Home started because I wanted to talk about it, and then I realized that I didn't have any. So I got in my car, and I just ripped across town. But um, So no one picked it, just a standard off-the-shelf bottle, and I thought it'd be fun to compare it to something that's also single barrel and pretty strong, over 60%. Um, we kind of see how they fare. I've, I've got probably 
eight or ten of these hanging around, but I figured this one wasn't a pick, and we'd see if just a random store bottle was nearly as good as a pick. So, and maybe too, I guess I probably should have gotten you some of the bullet. I started picking up bullet store picks the last couple of weeks, but yeah, you've been on a tear, bullets, huh? Man, I, I had the batch five barrel strength for it's thirty three dollars here. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It's like sixty in California, so I've been just trying to find every batch I can to do a vertical series, but I've only gotten three, four, and five, I think, so far. Jump it back just a second here. Matthew pointed out that he likes the nineteen ten, but the bottle lasts a long time, which I guess I mean if it's something that hits you in a way that you enjoy. That's good, obviously, but I could see how it would take a long time to go through it just because you would have to be in the exact mood for it, unless you just really, really dig that deep char sweetness that it has. Yeah, it has to be what you want to drink at that moment. Like, I never, like, I would go to my liquor, like, nook closet knowing that I wanted 1910. I wouldn't just right. kind of walk in there and be like, hmm, you know. Which is fair. I mean, there's no shame in bottles like, like I have some super sherried scotch that like will never get touched unless I'm going to like pick that bottle out or like some crazy, crazy weird brandy or stuff. So did we have any news from the uh, bourbon barrel selections here? Do we have anything we were going to share on that? Yeah. So while well, these air out a little bit, um, I think so. Knob Creek is 100% locked in. Uh, that's neat about that. We'll be getting a sample. It probably won't be a 15 year, but it, Definitely won't be a nine year. I uh, will be looking at a pretty nice sample. If that goes well, we'll probably pick up a couple more, which is nice. Uh, smooth Ambler samples have been ordered. Um, we'll pick two barrels. So we'll get six samples. Those should be in in the next couple of weeks. And Russell's is moving along nicely, um, starting some of the design work for that. So pretty straightforward. There's There's been no wrinkles so far. Um, one or two mystery things working on in the background. Those are going well. Um, New Riff is still on schedule for the fall, but I don't I don't see us doing that on, on premise. That'll be a remote selection as well. So we'll probably do kind of like we did for the Russells, and we'll do for the Ambler and the Knob Creek. We'll we'll do them remotely so everyone can kind of join in. It'll be good. Get everybody up here again. Start chatting. Yeah, yeah, and I think share it live. I know New Riff. I can get a little bigger sample. I mean, that's the hard part too, like because normally you can bring like ten people and just drink. You know, not as much as you want, but like as much as you need to like get yeah, a good. Try and really, really nail it. Um, the remote's a little harder, but the uh, some places are working really hard to us. Like, like when we did the Chattanooga selection, they gave us I'll probably four ounces, five ounces of each barrel. You know, really solid amount. Yeah, so. they package those up really nicely too. They really they invested in that. It hurt to recycle that box. I like held mm -hmm. on to it for a while. Um, and then one day me, my fiance looked to me and was like, really? You know, All right, it's time to let it go. And I like recycled yeah. it, but yeah, that's a nice, a nice setup. But I think that that might wrap it up. There's nothing, um, other Reddit selection news. The, the first batch of Cinco Sentidos um, Ensemble is hitting. That's it for bourbon. Scotch is pretty much the same. So I, I think it's time we uh, we drink some whiskey. All right, let's do it. Do you like drinking whiskey? Yeah, I have been. This is a. Uh, I, I warmed up with a little old Clenelish just because it's a Scotch whiskey. Uh, first drink of the day. It's nice to be sniffing some of this knob though. Creek Freezing knob aside, creek. this is definitely not good. Yeah, it's and crazy to me. a pretty good step this was 43.99 for the record yeah it's really tough to cry about that it's really kind of wild to start thinking about these dog creeks how it's age dated at nine years on the shelf and your picks go from nine to 15 year and the crazy profile change that you get every it seems like year and a half two years kind of is like where there's almost like a switch like there's like a the dial yeah and you go from that like like in this nine year a little bit sweeter a lot more fruit and then you start getting up to the 12 years you get a lot more of that like praline yeah type i of. almost would would wager that this 
from first sniff it might be a little bit older than nine. Right. I mean, there's nothing saying that it has to be nine on these. They're not going to be specifically labeled. It just stated at nine. Yeah, correct. This wouldn't. Yeah, I would not be shocked to find this to be more like an 11, maybe even 12. Actually, I probably even have a 12 I could have compared it to. That would have been a good idea. These are things I don't think of until I start getting into the whiskey. I get a <laughs> lot of great ideas when I start drinking the whiskey. By the end, we're just loaded with ideas. But So many good ideas. We're going to solve the world's fucking problems tonight, man. Yeah, hung hunger seems like a, a pretty pretty approachable target to, to strike down. Yep, I'm all over that shit tonight. I can feel it. Yeah, this is so, you know, so. This is just a standard nine. I'm guessing nose alone. I'm, I'm sure the taste will change that, but this is maybe 10, 11. I have a 14, 5 and a 15, 5. I know that I've opened that I should have brought in, but man. I'd be willing to bet that I have more than a dozen different Knob Creek picks open right now. I do like they fit nicely on the shelf too. Like you can hold more than two or three of them looking at you four roses um yeah seriously or like i don't know i've been i've been passing on birthday bourbon just because i have nowhere to put it like do i hang it from the ceiling like there's no mm -hmm. bottles like that are ridiculous you just go ahead and sit on it and waddle around with it <laughs> yeah i i feel like i could use it yeah just as like a lamp base or something yeah but man the nose on these I've, I've had a couple of bad Knob Creeks, but I've had very few compared to the amount of good Knob Creeks I've had. The ones that you didn't like, were those they had just aged too much and gone astringent, or was there just something else going on there that just didn't quite check it off? Typically, and it's really weird for me, I'm, I'm really sensitive to tannic and oak. Like, There's some Eagle Rare picks that I think, I think have been trashy because of how oaky they are, but the 15 and 16-year Knob Creeks I've had have been great. Um, it's usually them being like really peppery and hot and just kind of mm. searing and thin and really aggressive is it's been my gripe but there's only been I, I think two or three in the last 40 or so that i've had that i'd say like had major flaws which is really uh yeah yeah justin got us on that one yeah i i did walk right into that yeah i see you're using the royal us on that which i'm totally okay with too <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, I don't mind the Knob Creek wax. I open it above the garbage can and then I pull out the vacuum. Yeah, I think the bottle is absolutely worth the trade off of ripping off at least one and a half fingers per bottle you open. Yeah, you're and going getting to be wax body. in one of your eyes. There's going to be wax everywhere. It's going to be in your eye, behind your ear, somewhere deep within the crevasse of your bunker. I've occasionally like pulled bottles out of cabinets so i could like vacuum up the wax mm -hmm. just because it gets in the corners and stuff whiskey cam don't die on us Man. yeah i'm with uh eric here oh, where did his comment go bourbon for the masses eric says uh usually the bad ones and when they get up 15 or older and they get too dry and tannic i do have a couple that are they lean too far for me i really like oak it doesn't bother me most of the time when Stuff is even a little bit too strong. I can usually kind of dig out some of the stuff I like in it. But when they get like astringent or too dry is when they get relegated to cocktail duty. And I, I think they do great in that oh, realm yeah. too. Even when they're like perhaps a little bit too uh, too punchy to enjoy on their own. I, I think they still do a good job that way. It's hard to go wrong with like a Manhattan or an old fashioned with those really oak driven. For sure. Those those are good. I think the best one I had was was a Lincoln Road. It was called All Hallows Eve, and it was like almost sixteen years old. It was really shy. It was just really out there, but it was so good. Nice. I almost busted out my favorite Knob Creek pick of all time. I've only got four ounces of it left. It was actually sent to me as a sample from somebody oh. who knows it was my favorite. Oh, Taylor, goody. I'll send no, I'll make sure I'll double check the email next time and just, uh, I'll put like in the subject dress. Nice. Where? So you don't make it. Yeah. Oh man. Comparing. Yeah. So I, I've, I've only drank the knob here. Damn. I keep doing that. I've only had the knob creeks. That, this is what happens with the inner monologue. 
Yeah. This one's really rich on the nose. It, it does. I think maybe it could be 10 year, 10 year, 11 year. Yeah. I really wouldn't be surprised case. if this was up to 12. Oh, really? It doesn't have a ton of oak on it, but it has that buttery sweetness that kind of, there's like that spot between like 12 to 14 where they can be like a liquid Snickers if you hit them just right. Which I is, would agree with that. Yeah, there's there's some out there that are pure dessert. Yeah, like you get the milk chocolate and it's like pretty distinct for me, milk chocolate too. It's not like a deep, rich chocolate. It's just that like light, sweet chocolate with peanut and caramel and it's just crazy good. That's a good point. I had a first sip of this one. It, it's a little, hey, not me. Uh, my level of oak. Yeah, I, I think it really depends on the base distillate. I think that's a yeah. really good point. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing behind Knob is being big, bold, in your face bourbon anyway. So who knows? Maybe that allows them to get away with a little bit more abuse from the barrel, too. You can hide a lot in there just because it's such a, a punchy sip anyway. Yeah, in a way that I like better than Booker's. And I keep beating that drum. I need to go yep. buy a bunch of Booker's and try them. But... Man, uh, yeah, I guess I'm kind of on the same boat. But now that Baker's is out in a single barrel format, and it's 58 bucks, it's just like, man. man if I, I just want... got some of the 13 in, too, and that's good. It is real good. I wonder, it'd be cool to do uh, Baker's 13 in a 13-year Knob Creek comparison. Oh, yeah. Or even it'd be fun to do an old Baker 7 because I still see some of those and the new Bakers and the new Bakers 13. I've done that blind and oh, how did they're pay? incrementally like you could tell which is which or at least I did anyway. Like, OK, <laughs> it, it was it. it was very clear to me which was the 13. That was very obvious okay. off the bat. And then as you sit back through like I drank, I've always liked Baker, so. I have got like a pretty good imprint of the profile and going through it, it was something that uh, actually Joel, who was going to jump on our funky rum episode last week, he sent it to me uh, blind and then asked me to give my notes and to guess them. And I was like, okay, I don't usually guess. I don't like doing it. So don't tell me if I got it wrong, but if I get it right, tell me. Okay. And I, and I did. Oh, good. Okay. I, I was pretty confident in what I thought they all were. But the new Baker 7 is real good. And it makes me be like, ah, Bookers, I'm sorry. Like, I used <laughs> to really, really enjoy hanging out with my buddy Bookers. But I just, like, I can't do it now. The thing for me is that Bookers, I mean, while they run a little bit hotter in ABV points, they they often are very unbridled in a way that Knob Creek, for half the price now, mm -hmm. has never been a problem. And, you know. That for me is just kind of a big winner, but I haven't reviewed a Booker's in years now, so it's probably time to fix that and just get over it. But yeah, mm. I'm digging that Knob Creek. It's good. Yeah. So on first taste, this isn't quite that Snickers bar profile, but it reminds me a lot of uh, Hundred Grand, like the. Yeah, I was thinking. No, payday. sorry, payday. Payday, yeah. yeah the, payday. The, the peanut caramel, yeah. really desserty. The oak is really a backseat here, but it's there, which is nice. Yeah, it's missing that uh that darker note. It doesn't have any type of like chocolate or anything going on there for me. Uh, on the nose, I thought it was a little bit on the fruitier side, but sipping it, I was just like, I'm with you, man. It's like that. Payday, caramel, peanut all day. Yeah, yeah, the nose is is fruity caramel. There's there's not that oak chocolate kind of plum, but even on the palate, like I'm surprised at how much oak these can have in like a really well integrated way. Yeah, it's not like it's kicking you in the in the face with oak or anything. It's not like just super strong in any one direction. It's they mm -hmm. do a really great job with the profile here. Yeah, that's really nice. Finish is, is kind of short, but it for 60% is really, really nice. Really effortless almost. Yeah, it's on the shorter side of medium, I would say. Though I wouldn't call it a short finish, but as far as... If you want to compare it to other Knob Creek picks, it's it would be dwarfed pretty easily. Yeah, it doesn't just sit and hang on your jaw. Like, yep. you don't have to, you know, swallow and, and you know, kind of work it through to to get it to go away that's that's pretty nice though it rests rests pretty well 
Chris Thomas says that he's never had the uh, Snickers note before, but now that we talk about it, it's there. Yeah, that power suggestion is real. And it's interesting because like that's all tasting is, is making connections, right? So if you haven't smelled or thought of something, your brain hasn't, you know, hopped across to make that connection. But yeah, once once you get it, like uh, years and years ago, I had a um, mezcal and someone was like, doesn't this smell like a Bloody Mary? I um, mean, I was just struggling to figure out what the note was. But once it said Bloody Mary and I got the tomato and pepper and like that Worcestershire note, it just yeah, was that little chaotic. background spice. Like I could feel the electrons jump. I'm we got Hokey, who's a sucker for heavy, thick peanut. Yeah, I was wondering if we were going to call him out on that or not. I'm glad you did. I just wasn't sure if we were going to attack that. Yeah. I really liked Booker's at 55. Um, I thought Booker's at 55 made some sense. Like it had a point, but Booker's at it's 95 here. Yeah, and it's 85 beat, here, and know, even there, it collects dust. It's too much. It it's yeah. six years. I haven't seen one over seven in years. Yeah. Um, this is you know, this is nine. It's probably ten or eleven. It's forty three dollars. Right. It's better. Um, and I mean, if you care about four extra ABV points, I certainly don't then by all means pay twice the price. But Booker's Booker's is the old bakers. I didn't understand why old bakers existed, and now I kind of don't understand why Booker's exists. Yeah, that's a really great way of looking at it because the old bakers was that thing. It's like, yeah, you could get Booker's for like 50, or I don't remember if it was 55 or 60 here when I used to buy it frequently. I mean, I'm talking like every other month I'd buy another one, whether it was yeah, a new batch or not, because I liked it. I mean, and and to be fair, Booker's makes an excellent gift. If you have a hundred bucks, oh, yeah. you need to spend it on a bourbon. Don't buy some Total Wine brand. Maybe buy Magnus if you can find it, because that's really nice. But if you need something nice, like get them a fancy box, and they want it to yeah. be bourbon, buy Booker's for that. It's a great gift. But you know, buy two Knob Creek if it's for yourself, and it's not for a gift. All right, I might I might yeah. move on to the Jack Daniels just a little bit. The I'm saving some of the Knob Creek to compare, but yeah, that's what I'm doing too. I got the goose out here. That has so much flavor, man! Wow. Here, it's just totally like, different. <laughs> yeah, this is just like, man, right off the bat, going in strong with the uh, hot fudge sundae with bananas. You know what I'm saying? A banana split, rather. Sorry. Yeah, this to me is like those banana, those dried banana, not crackers, but the chips. Yeah, yeah. That on the nose yeah, is sure. just super prominent. A bunch of like, not buttercream, but like a, I don't know, like a, a heavy creaminess. So there's something in there, like maybe like bananas foster even. It has that pungent sweetness to it. Like this is super yeah. sweet. Like the knob was was berry forward. Knob Creek was had some berry to it, but wasn't immediately like desserty sweet this is this is crazy sweet man yeah banana chips is like if i had one note that could that could take it all yeah i mean there's definitely a bunch of banana in there and man whiskey cam is being a fucking ass uh at first i was like you know it's like I'm getting this like vanilla ice cream banana type of thing going on. There's a little bit of nuttiness in there too. So I'm thinking like banana split, but man, those banana chips that you're right, that concentrated dried banana. Oh man. It's like banana and granola and like honey pecan. And like I'm not one to, to really look at the color in the legs, but like the, the thick syrupy richness of this is just insane. And it makes sense once you taste a little bit of it. Man. Man, I get There's a bunch of note. that. There's something yeah. on the nose I can't quite pick out. I'm getting that roasted peanut, but not like a jar of peanuts. I'm talking like the peanuts that still have the a little bit of the skin on them that you get like on a like on a oh, nice Sunday or something like the Spanish peanut or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I could totally see that. Wow. This Not is the fun of, of tasting some stuff like months after I've done it before. Yeah, I come back around to it and see. That's nice. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, that's that's still like one note though. Banana chip all day. Maybe some graham cracker. Maybe some waffle cone. You do like a waffle cone, man. I really do, especially since I don't really. I used to work in an ice cream shop back in high school, and it ruined ice cream for me for probably a decade. Um, yeah. Last, you know, last couple of years, I, I've been getting getting over that and stuff. But man, it's such a prominent note, and I just love it. Wow. Hmm. Finish on this is foolish too. This one definitely drinks way hotter, but the finish. Wow. That finish really sticks around. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, it does bring a pretty good amount of heat with it, but it's I'm also not, I'm not scared off by it or anything like that. I, I think it's it stays in its lane. It's hot, but it's good. Yeah, this is 66 something percent. This is pretty hefty. Yep. And it, I mean, it carries very nicely for that. Um, I would totally agree. This is bananas foster all day long like some of these jacks so often are but usually they're they're so banana forward that it, unless you love banana you won't like it this is right remarkably restrained there's just there's a lot going on in there too i like that yeah, that's... sweet cream in the background yeah that, that's that's actually a, a, i think that's a very accurate note there it's uh It's a little oakier than I expect for five years too on the palate, but it's really nice. It's not. Yeah. It's not that fake oak I get a lot in Texas stuff. It's just no, this like over. I mean, this is still top floor, high heat. Like this is a monster on color. I mean, <laughs> on the uh, bring it up on the whiskey cam here. I mean, the color on this is for a five year whiskey is downright fucking silly. I think too. I mean, we can see very clearly. One of these is the Knob Creek, um, this guy here. Right. It's not nearly as dark, and it's probably twice the age. It's... Yeah. Yeah, the Jack is five, and the Knob, I would guess, could very easily be double the age. I mean, it's crazy, too. Like, I mean, it goes to show that age isn't, you know, is, is just a number sometimes. Uh, you know, blind this. Yeah. I would not have guessed this is five years. And honestly, I, I only heard recently, it was probably the last year or so that I realized how young these truly were. I always assumed they were were 10 years and that's yeah. why they were expensive and hard to get at first. But I don't know of a single one that's over six. No, I'd easily peg this for an eight or 10 year. Man. And that's cool too. That's something I see in Chattanooga whiskey too, that, you know, they tell me, oh, this is three year, you know, three and a half or four years and it's drinking like it's seven or eight which makes me super pumped on their stuff it's five or seven years old all right hokey i'm gonna put a question back to you on this one if the fresh waffle cone is one of the best smells in the world what about fresh ground coffee where does that rate in comparison to the waffle cone because both of them are fucking intoxicating to me if you walk by either a uh, coffee place that's grinding out fresh beans or an ice cream place it's wheeling out hot waffle cones it's very tough to walk by and be like no nah, i don't want one <laughs> and we're talking like it could be six in the morning or six at night and you walk by and you're just like oh that smells so good that i, I think let me just go in and look at the menu let me just go it's see. the quintessential like dessert item for me like if i want dessert i'm like let's get some ice cream Let's see. Brett had a good point regarding uh, whether this was an outlier. I'm pulling it up right now. I have stats on Daniels, if I can spell it right. Honestly, I think this one is an outlier in that it's really phenomenal, but it's not an outlier in that it's good. Um, let's see. It looks like I've had 10 single barrels, and I thought that they were all 6, 7, 8, with 8 being really rare. This was the first 8 for Ajax Daniels. but You're talking you 8 know, in score, correct? Yeah, an eight out of ten, so very high ranking. Um, you know, I haven't had a bad Jack Daniels that I've, I've reviewed back in a couple of years ago. There's some really atrocious ones that I had at tastings, but you know, if you're at a tasting, you don't like it, just dump it out and get right. something else. 
but that is a good point. Like this is an exceptional pick, um, but it's pretty indicative of the quality overall. It's not like the rest are pretty bad and they, they got some crazy honey barrel. This one is uh, certainly better than the rest, but it's not uh, not the best barrel coming out of Jack Daniels. It was like rolled out. Here's our answer from Hokey. Obviously oh. a masochist. Yeah, he's... Wow, my teeth hurt a little bit just thinking about that. Yeah, that's aggressive. I like it, though. <laughs> I'm the type of dude that, like, after dinner at a restaurant, immediately without looking at the dessert menu, I'm getting coffee. Okay. And then after I look at the dessert menu, I'm either getting a, something that's got chocolate and or peanut butter or <laughs> ordering, like, an Angel's Envy or, or, like, some type of finished whiskey to have alongside my coffee. Wow, that's... We eat out in very different ways. Okay. Uh, should I'm we like, dig into that? <laughs> um, that one's on me. Um, <laughs> I really like the pickup. This this is only going to get worse from here. I really like the uh, curbside pickup method. Personally, I think that returns the best results. Okay. I don't know. It's fun. I like to pick up food that I want to buy, and then I bring it home to all the booze and... You know, we have the glassware and the plates and my dog can run around, but yeah, I intentionally, I think we've talked about this before. Like there's a few bottles that I don't buy just so in the rare event that I'm mm. out, I can get a pour of them without feeling like, ah, oh, fuck, why am I paying 14 bucks for this when I could just drink like as many pours as I want at the house. Yeah. So I do that with things like Angel's Envy or Now Booker's, you know, there's a few things like that that I'll happily let sit on the shelf at a bar so I can get it by and Just i'll get a little here and there yeah there was a bar here that was really beautiful it was on a lake and they had um scapa 16 which is a bottle that i loved uh, scapa is a scotch whiskey it's from orkney which is where highland park is um and it was it was really good but i never bought a full bottle um but i always knew it'd be there to drink and i i love that so i can totally see where you're coming from on there um, I do also like peanut butter. I think peanut butter rocks. So crazy about peanut butter, man. It's like I'll eat an apple just as like a vessel to get more peanut butter into my life. As the vehicle. Yeah. Affogato is also good. Yeah, you're damn right it is. I do really like affogato. Yeah. It, yeah, that checks a lot of boxes off. Okay. Well, do you want to maybe dig into a, a little comparison. Do we, I mean, do we need to pick a winner here? I feel like neither one of these is a loser, so it's real easy to... No, I, I think like I was I was curious if maybe the couple of days, um, since I tasted this guy over over three days, if it, if it just hit everything right for me. And, and smelling the knob, Creek, I would definitely... I still think I like the Jack Daniels better, but... Um, this assuades my fears. I, I grabbed a random shelfie Knob Creek because I was super in a hurry and I needed to talk about it for an event. Um, but I would continue to buy these blind all the time, which is what I was kind of curious about. Like, can some random Knob Creek just, you know, can it do can you it know, just a couple of good. rounds with a Jack Daniels? And, and I think yeah. that's totally the case here. Yeah, it's I'm good. with you on that. That's nice stuff. I think the Jack Daniels, I mean, um, I'm not involved with Bourbon Pursuit in any way, and this is fucking fantastic. I think that this is, if it's not the best Jack Daniels single barrel I've had, it's it's easily in the top echelon. Um, in fact, maybe in the future we'll have to compare it again to like some of the best Knob Creek I can find. But in a toss up, I I think that Knob Creek is going to perform really good in almost any scenario. But that's just me. No, I'm with you. I don't think, especially when it comes to like store pick knob creeks, they get stupid good. It just amazes me that people are still like really chasing like whether it's specific Rick and tears for four roses and paying out the nose for some limited editions when, you know, when bottles like this just kind of are sitting around just waiting all the time. Yeah. I see what you're saying there. I'll qualify that though by saying that the Standard Knob Creek 100 for me is kind of hot and not that great. It's snoozy for sure. Yeah. 
but the that's single the thing, barrel, yeah and and that's kind of like jack daniels too right like like if you hadn't tasted jack daniels single barrel barrel proof would you believe that the the premium version of jack daniels black label number seven could possibly be good not in a hundred fucking years man <laughs> In fact, yeah, I'm looking when I looked at the single barrels, I, I gave number seven a three out of ten, which is just like actively bad whiskey. Right. I agree. Like it's their number one seller, but if it gives us stuff like this to continue to enjoy, I'm all for it. Yeah. What are the chances? Let's see. Hokey had a great question there. Um, the chances aren't zero. I haven't reached out to them yet. Uh, we've we've been busy with picks. We could totally do one if we wanted to. Probably 2021. Um, it could happen. I think I would super be all over it. I think we'd probably have to convince people. A lot of people in our bourbon don't like don't like Jack Daniels. Not in that they don't like Jack Daniels number seven. They just don't like the idea of Jack Daniels. Yeah, um, they don't like it on premise alone. And like 20 percent of them still don't think that Jack Daniels is bourbon, which is kind of concerning. But it's just um, right on the sticker, man. It's not not bourbon. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I mean, there is a subreddit. If you're if you're questionable, you can go to um, is Jack Daniels bourbon, you know, so reddit.com slash r slash is Jack Daniels bourbon. Um, and that'll answer all of your questions there. But uh, the chances are good. The chances aren't there yet. We're, we're not actively doing one, but we could totally do one in the future, most likely. Which I think would be super cool. They also do... Uh... I think that you can do a JD Rye pick as well. Those are just starting to roll out. Yeah. Or actually, do you mean the barrel barrel proof? Yeah. Okay, yeah, those are starting to roll out. Um, I just like that you also get a murder weapon of a bottle. I have, I have a different just shelfy Jack Daniels here, which yeah. I'm glad to look at it. It's pretty fucking dark. Yeah, you um, could bludgeon the shit out of something with that. It's not quite Driftless Glen, but if you don't have Driftless Glen on hand, this will this will uh, make short work of your assailant. Yeah, those Driftless bottles are fucking aggressive. I, I have to spread them out on shelves, otherwise the shelves start to get like an uncomfortable bend to them because of how I, I believe that extra heavy they are. But yeah. Now here's here's the real question for science. I do have one glass here. Um, if we take a little bit of one and we take a, sorry, I should do this where people can see it, a little bit of the other. I don't expect this to be better, but it's always kind of fun. Always interesting. I mean, you're talking about the dudes who put Doc in Buffalo Trace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have one of those guys running around. Interesting. That goose is good. That is not better than the the two individually, so don't mix those. Get yourself a deal. Yeah, man, that goose is fantastic. Yep. So um, let's talk about doing a bonus pour. Yeah, yeah. What do you got on hand? Well, let's take a look. Do a little reveal here. <laughs> It was really just because it was too cluttered up here with all the bottles. And I was like, what am I going to do about this besides probably nothing? And I was like, well, I have these books right here. So I've got a Pursuit series, episode 23, which is a 15-year Tennessee. Oh, bourbon. yeah. A, let's see, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This one is B519. And then the last year's release, I'm sorry, the uh, first release of the Last Any Bell Proof. A1. Is that the 19 as well? It's the A120. Oh, A120, okay. Interesting. I, I actually, uh, <clears throat> we didn't coordinate this because we had a very busy day. Um, I think I have some B519 kicking around somewhere of the Elijah Craig. I don't know where it is right now. but I also could have mentioned to you that that's what I had here and made your life easier. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, I, I I brought on. I have a random. I really like the Jack Daniels does this. I have a three seven five of an off the shelf. This was bottled in twenty eighteen. Uh, Jack Daniels single barrel. I just freshly cracked uh, batch four of bullet barrel strength, and I think that's really. 
I brought some other weird stuff. I have like Chattanooga uh, 111 and some Pursuit Series. Maybe I'll hop on the Pursuit Series train here with you as well. Wait, 24 also looks like a 15 year, unless this was mistaken. So maybe I'll drink some of that. Yeah, I think they have two or maybe even three 15 years going. So that, that's the road you're going down? Yeah, I think uh, maybe we'll use an empty glass though. Kind of fun to just pull random stuff out. Okay, let's put the goose back. Running out of real estate here. No, I feel my my desk is just like just slammed. Wow, it's been a long time since I've had old dicko like this go from smelling knob to some old dickle yeah we really didn't set ourselves up for success here no i mean there's plenty of room for innuendo here i'm amazed this uh this pursuit nose is actually very similar to the knob creek but i typically don't get that that dickle vitamin chalky mineral on the nose, it's usually all in the palate for me. Hmm. It's kind of savory, a little sweet there too. A little bit of smoke mixing in. Yep, there's a vitamin, but it's nice. Yeah, it's in control. It's not like some of the. Uh, I've had some of the Dickel stuff that it's just like straight up Flintstones that I it's don't even right. want to get involved with. A lot of the um, barrel Dickel is super vitamin four to me, which I I don't mind. I just that's the thing. Like I have to be in the mindset to have it. Yep. Um, and some days I just don't super want that. But right, the Pursuit series. Tennessee bourbon source from Dickel is supposedly not been through the Lincoln County process. Oh, I guess I didn't realize that was the case for all of them. I thought it was for one specific release. I believe the way Kenny worded it is that their broker told them none of their barrels had been, but that may have been none of the barrels up until the point in which he had said it, or it may be none of the barrels that they have at all. And either way, there's no way that we could prove or disprove that. So we're taking yeah. taking everybody at their word there. I don't know if it makes a drastic difference to me on or off paper, really. I mean, as long as the whiskey tastes okay, I don't necessarily care if it's been through that process or not. I think this is good. This one comes out like a kind of a combo of sweet and savory to me. There's definitely more smoke going on here for me than there is in any of the others that we've had tonight. Yeah, I, I could totally see that. Um, mine's obviously a little bit different. But but Dickel does have that kind of like that savory hardwood characteristic too, where it yeah. doesn't go full smoke like like a scotch or a mezcal would. But I no, no, no. Really savory and kind of that almost that, uh, like, you know, the day after you're camping and you like go near the campfire and it has that. Yes. That faint woody mesquite note. Yeah, I was gonna call this more of like a barbecue smoke. Oh yeah. More definitely like a, I don't know, like a, a background hardwood type of deal. Interesting. It's kind of cool actually coming from the payday and bananas uh, foster to the yeah, sort of a, a dark totally cocoa different. smokiness. It's nice. It reins you back in. Like, yes, this is old. Yeah. It's woody, but it's it's certainly not um, that dry or tannic. In fact, it even, this feels less tannic than the Knob Creek, but it, in a more yep. satisfying way. It has more structure to it. Hokey had a great question. Um, let's see. I got it. What do you think is, oh, yeah, funny how. Um, what do you think is the most consistent profile for a single barrel 
non-store pick. That has to be four roses for me. Four roses, single barrel, all day. Uh, yep. Without that makes sense. Doubt. Other than that, Evan Williams, single barrel. Oh, yeah. Those both, I, I would say those are neck and neck. And I know that's, you're probably trying to think of something barrel proof, but, you know, regular four rows of single barrel is OBSV. I believe or it's OESV. OBSV. OBSV, 100 proof. proof. Yep. Which is perfectly competent. It's about 35 bucks. Evan Williams single barrel is about 20 bucks, 25, maybe 30. 30 here, yeah. That's 43.3% if I'm not mistaken. It is. But those, I, I think that, I mean, if you're looking for the most consistent single barrel that's not a pick, I would 100%, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said he, he asked that because he poured some four rows of single barrel. That, if, if I have to go into a liquor store with 30 bucks, and that's what I'm walking out with every time, unless I get Evan Williams bottled and bond, which is a big favorite of mine. Yeah, that's true. And it has to be bourbon. Those are probably the two I'm going to leave with. Although, I don't know if Wisconsin gets much weirder. The uh, the bullet barrel strength might get under thirty bucks. Yeah, that's mental. And then I'll buy every single one of them. Yep. Let's yeah. Move this over here to grab a little Q and A here. I mean, we're already more or less fielding questions as we go, but since yeah. we're into our bonus pour section of the segment here, let's go ahead and take any questions if. Any of you lot want to ask them? We'll finish sipping through these. Man, if this Pursuit series had a little bit of cinnamon going on in the background, this would be like Mexican hot chocolate. Yeah, I could totally see that. This, or, this has a very mocha feel to me. Like yeah, Mexican food. chocolate anyway. Maybe not hot chocolate because it doesn't have that creaminess, but maybe like a Mexican chocolate though. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, oaky, a little bit of pepper. I could almost see like yeah. a tiny bit of like a like a jalapeno. Yeah, and I think for me it might just be because there's a little bit of pepper and a little bit of smoke. So I'm I'm probably kind of crossing those. I'm bridging that gap maybe just because that's what's coming to mind. But it just if man, if there was just a touch of cinnamon in there, I think that that's 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 where my mind is going. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that, and it's nice like. There is some of that vitamin minerality on the palate, but yep. at least for 24, it, it's really restrained. Yeah, I mean, this is clearly a Dickel product, but yeah, it's not doing. like, I mean, I've had some that were just like, you take a smell <laughs> and you just want to set the glass down and walk away for a while. They're like, let me come back to that in a minute and just see if that's really what just happened to my senses mm -hmm. there. And you come back, you're like, yeah, it is. Okay, well. This is what I'm about to have. Let's get this over with so we can drink something else. Yeah, those are nice. I, I mean, I know everyone's freaking out because Sweeten's Cove is, what, 13-year Dickel? 13, yeah. I mean, by the, I, I have not had Sweeten's Cove. But I have not. 200, it's 200 bucks. It's 13 years. It has been expertly blended. I, uh, what did these go for? 109, 105, 89? In that range. I want to sure. say they were around 100. So by two, they were, then. let's call it 80 to 115. That feels right. I think I saw 105. That, that sticks in my mind for some reason. I don't yeah. know why. I, yeah. The, the, the stuff over 13 years, I think, is over 100 usually. But I mean, yeah. yeah. Rhett's got it right. I mean, you could safely call this a hundred bucks, hundred ish. I think honestly, I mean, I need to try the Knob Knob Creek fifteen year limited releases or whatever they're doing now. Yeah, the hundred. Uh, this is not a bad way to spend a hundred bucks if you're trying to get a fifteen year whiskey. I mean, Whistle Pig. I mean, that's a ride, but their fifteen year is going to put you. It's like well twenty five here, I think. I want to say it's 189 here, 179. It's good stuff. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the whistle pig stuff, but there's no denying that they're very pricey. They're super pricey. And they're yeah. only getting pricier. Yeah, sadly. I think I have like maybe six different whistle pig offerings now. And just like I'm 
I don't really like I buy them knowing that they're going to be expensive and that I'm going to be excited about having them. But then I tend to go through them pretty slowly. Yeah, I don't want to have to buy it again. I, I totally feel you. I, d- I did like I did 22 or 24 whistle pigs in 2018. And yeah, that was awesome. I was like, man, this was fun. But, you know, a lot once of dollars these run out. That's they're so ex- and like, you know, they're like, OK, cool. The 10, 12, 13 year picks are great. But the next limited edition is going to be 50 bucks more than the previous release. Yeah. And I, I like what they do with Boss Hog. I like that they price it where it belongs in the market i know that's yep. probably not a popular opinion but i think it's fine you know they try their ass yeah. off with the boss hog too like they really i mean there is a lot of effort that goes into each one of those and not to say that you should buy expensive ass whiskey just because somebody tried really hard to make it because we've all had those that are absolutely awful but, but when you are taking expensive things it's warranted right if you're taking a step to the premium shelf anyway and you want to you know buy something and feel like all right i bought a 500 hundred dollar bottle of whiskey what is this doing for me you're going to get the presentation you're going to get a gorgeous bottle you're going to get all the things that make you feel like okay this thing is worthy of looking the part and then you taste it and you're like holy shit this is like <laughs> I, i've not had stuff like this before it's all pretty unique and i mean yeah people can make the argument like buy a george t stag off of facebook for 500 dollars. like yeah you can do that but yep, certainly i i think you lose some of the you know it's nice to see them not release boss hog at 110 bucks and make sure that no one can get one so secondary yep. goes wild right exactly like yeah you could buy a george t stag for four or five hundred bucks or you could get it at lottery for 99.99 like yeah exactly y- you're not doing that with a boss hog no oh. no and i've been tempted a couple t- there and and like totally fair like whiskey is a luxury good i'm yep. not upset if i get priced out of it like sure i'm just not there yet in life maybe someday i'll be buying up boss hogs and sending them out for christmas but you know i hope to be on, on the top of your christmas list if that's the case yeah i, I figure one one to you and maybe one of the elves but yep. you know makes sense if a limited edition that's worth it is too expensive for me that doesn't really bother me Man, I am really excited. Now that we're talking Boss Hog, I'm really excited about the next year's 17-year Magellan. Yeah. Really, really excited about it. What was the... Uh, I'll be honest. I kind of snoozed and fell asleep talking about last year's. Was that... That was the Samurai, right? Yeah, the Samurai. Was it Tokaji cask or something funky Yes, and weird? it was. Yeah, it was definitely something funky and weird. And it was okay. one that, like, they announced the Whistle Big 18 in the same year as that and i'm like i was like there's no way i'm getting both and so i have a standing order for the whistle pig 18 when it finally hits here which okay. has priced me out of getting the uh, boss hog Samurai. six yeah i i drank some tokaji the other night and for some reason boss hog samurai just kept popping into my head and i couldn't figure out why and now that's I, it that makes sense yeah yeah i mean those those are nice i i had uh umashu um i had the only one i didn't think was worth it was black prince i thought that was pedestrian at best but i, I explained black prince is, that was good black prince is the one that won whiskey of the year like that was like widely regarded as being the best thing going no i yeah i didn't have it i i couldn't even find it or get my hands on it or know anybody who did it was expensive and it was very hard to get I, and i mean it, it certainly wasn't bad um i thought it was good whiskey but it it wasn't you know which is almost sort of a relief like do i have to go find one of these things after i try it and i was like no no yeah. I, i'm happy i had my two ounces that was perfect yeah totally good had my you know my my uh black prince experience but yeah i like what they're doing and i know that they do the pewter stuff and i've got a couple of those yep. hanging around but yeah, they do those from the company right down the road too, which is nice. They actually the uh the I think we might have even talked about this before. I don't want to you know go too crazy on whistle pig stuff here. But the uh, the glass topper from the whistle pig 18 decanter is also like one of those handmade things from down the road. And like one in three of those is actually good enough to meet the standard to actually mm-hmm. go into the gift box and everything. Like they they try really hard on all the presentation stuff, which would be worth fuck all if the whiskey wasn't good, but I tend to like it, so 
to me, I think it's a really cool. It's definitely a luxury item. You don't go buy two or three of these to stock <laughs> up. You I'm buy so one and you spend a year having it a half ounce at a time and, you know, feel fucking lucky to have seen it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, and I, I'm a huge fan myself. I, I just hope they keep bringing in Alberta Rye single barrels. I think mm-hmm. that's where they shine for me. I don't, oh, man, the Alberta Rye is so good. I kind of I don't care about the MGP ones they got. Their limiteds are okay. They're usually too expensive for me. But as long as they keep bringing in Alberta Rye single gas, I'm buying them all day. Yep. Man, we had quite the uh, quite the spread here tonight. None, yeah, nothing was barrel proof either. <laughs> oh yeah, Rhett wants to talk a little turkey. Yeah, that's a good point. I have the bottled and bond coming soon. Maybe I don't know. Um, I'll be curious to see about that one. Seventeen years feels like it might be. Might be tenuous for Turkey and how they handle the oak, but I have an open mind. I'm looking forward to that one. I know you you quite liked it, John, which gives me a lot of hope. We seem to overlap very strongly. Yeah, I did. I think knowing the way, like one of the few things that we tend to deviate on is oak. And the amount of oak and the way that it comes through, I would be a little bit impressed if you grabbed it by the horns i think it might be a little bit on the oaky side for you well, and i almost honestly i almost thought it was for me at first sip and then i kind of sat with it a little bit i had a few different pours over the course of the day and then i sat down to take my notes later on so i had like maybe a half ounce here half ounce there and like kind of split it up so that way i wasn't just like trying to focus all on it because it's been hyped up pretty good you know there's a lot going into this release a lot of chatter and the finish on it really i liked and so for me i use that uh that grade school sl- uh, sliding scale you know a b c d whatever and it could have been a b plus for me or it could have been an a minus and that finish did it for me and moved it up into the a minus category that said i could taste it again right now and who knows maybe it would be a b or a b plus or an A minus or an A, you know, things like that can change on a daily basis. But it was, it was pretty tasty stuff. Yeah. It's 14,400 bottles, I think, right? And certainly, it's certainly a premium product. Oh yeah. But I mean, all right. So it's 17 years. That's just a little bit over 10 bucks a year. I I don't feel too bad about that. Right. For bourbon. If it was, that for a, a middle producer i mean i think wild turkey is nice i don't think they're anywhere near my top producers so you know thinking about scotch you know a 10 12 ish a year for a middling distiller seems completely fair to me yeah i think they do a good job too i like a lot of what turkey does i'm yeah. a pretty big fan of their product in general but a lot of that is because i feel like they don't overreach they mm-hmm. make a very very good like you said they're like a middling maybe producer but they make a product that's better than their class or grade maybe and it's usually fairly priced like nothing from wild turkey is right bonkers except master scape which is fine yeah i mean they're they're shelfy single barrels like 50 bucks then they've yeah, got a 10 year age great. stated that's like 30 bucks i mean they Obviously, Wild Turkey 101 is about as in line as you could ever ask a complex bourbon to be. Yeah, totally. And like, and, and in that same vein, I still wonder why no one will buy Bernheim 7 here. Because it doesn't show up here. Oh, does it not in Maine? It does not. Oh, man. Well, if you ever want some, let me know. But it's like $24. It's a seven-year wheat whiskey. Yep. It's fantastic, but it's kind of like Russell's 10. I've never seen someone just walk in and buy Russell's 10. And honestly, the first couple of Russell's 10 I had in 2015 were terrible. So I like kind of wrote it off for a while. But I think a lot of folks did. It was, I don't know what they did in 2015. Something was wrong. Something was not good. Um, they were thin. They were mad. But now yeah. they're, they're fine. Like, you know, 
Eagle Rare, people are flipping out about for twenty seven to thirty five dollars. Yeah. Get Russell's. And this is I mean, I'm no wild turkey advocate here, but I think it's a great product for the price. I mean, granted I can get Buffalo Trace that's like about eight years for twenty two ninety nine. So that kind of edges it out, but Yeah. Yeah, that middle uh middle shelf pricing for you is pretty it's appealing. Weird. Yeah, between like that weird like Durango, like uh did you try the Apaloos I sent you? That Durango Mezcal? Dude, loved it. It's twenty one bucks a liter. It's like thirty dollars to seven fifty everywhere else. It makes like shit. I don't get it. Like and same thing for Buffalo Trace. Like it's here every day for twenty three, but I haven't seen an Eagle Rare in six months. No, oh, no kidding. Yeah, we get uh Buffalo Trace at twenty five and Eagle Rare at thirty three. Okay. Well, I should say twenty six and thirty four, I guess, because it's you know thirty three ninety nine. But yeah. I mean, they're they're not priced in a way that are keeping people away from them. Like folks who have no idea what the product is, and they come in with a budget in mind, will yeah, be grabbing those off the shelf. The yeah, like oh, geez, this one looks kind of cool. It's up on a higher shelf than those other ones, and it's still only thirty four bucks. I'll grab that. Yeah, totally. I mean, and it's a nice package, like. Once you break that twenty dollar point, with the exception of Evan Williams single barrel, I think like everything's looking real nice, unless it's some garbage crap producer. Like, right? Uh, bourbon's in a pretty good spot, as evidenced by True. the fact that nothing we drank tonight. I think. Oh, I mean, the the pursuit that we ended up with were a bit of a premium, but a right. few feature reviews were under sixty dollars. Um, and one of them garnering an eight out of ten for me is is really exciting to see. Yep. But uh, man, the longer the dickle sits, the more vitamin four the nose gets. I already finished mine. I didn't let yeah. it get that far. I left the tiniest bit, but I I got to close out on the gooses. That's that's fantastic. That's a pat on the. I'm back. doing the same. Whoever picked this, those yeah. guys. Man, but yeah, what do you say? Uh, should we wrap this up for the evening? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. So I think down in the uh, show notes there at the bottom, I've included a link to the WhiskeyNet Discord. Anybody that's tuning in wants to be able to stay in touch with us, chat a little bit, share reviews, talk about these things in a more extended format. We're in there pretty frequently. Uh, feel free to jump in, check it out pretty much all day, like every day. It's not a big deal. Uh, if you want to jump into Discord, join us there. If you want to find myself or Jay on Instagram, you can see our names both there on screen, take.review and the Bourbon Finder. We're pretty much always bullshitting about whiskey. And uh, we would love to do that with you as well. Jay, do you want to Throw some stuff in there and close it out, and then I'll hit a little outro video for us. Yeah, it sounds great. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, Knob Creek, if you can find it, good stuff. Uh, Jack Daniels, if you can find it, great stuff too. Um, if you're looking for reviews, I drop one every single day at Take That Review. Just type that into your browser, it'll take you where you need to go. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got. I hope you're staying healthy and having a good evening. But uh, yeah, check back next week. I think uh, you're on vacation next week, right, John? I'm on vacation for the next two weeks, but I'll That's be uh, I'll be in and out. Cool. So we well, may we may uh, do some yeah. different streaming stuff, but you'll still be kicking it live on Tuesdays. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll take up the slot. Maybe uh, maybe I'll bring in a guest or two for a week or two, but uh, we'll have some good times. But in the meantime, yeah, find John at the Bourbon Finder on Instagram or online, and find me a takedown review, and uh, we'll talk about some booze. Have a good one. Cheers. <laughs>